Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, we're going to talk about a topic we haven't yet covered on this channel with regards to Casa OS, and that is how to update Docker containers using Casa OS. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see that Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So this is actually like the fourth time I've recorded this video. I actually recorded it in full yesterday uh, a couple of times because, you know, stuff happens. And uh, then this morning I re-recorded it and ran into some issues and then decided to re-record it again and then realized, hey, wait a minute. And here we are, I hope, with a full rendition of what this video was meant to be from the start. So I'm actually thankful that things kind of went awry to start with. So the problem that Casa OS has in its infancy at this point is that there's currently no way to see if there's an update available for a Docker container. If we take a look at our dashboard here, um, if we just, we have containers available, but it never gives us any indication as to whether or not there are any updates available. So what do we do? Well, we've got a couple of options. One, we can keep track on paper or in our heads of what containers we've got, and then manually go check all of those different repositories to see if there are any updates available. And that option sucks. The other option we've got is to use something like Watchtower. Now, when I was doing my recording yesterday, I actually uh, set up Watchtower on here, got it all configured to run updates automatically and that sort of thing. Then I noticed when I logged in this morning that one of my containers was missing. Um, so I, I came to here and uh, what should actually be on here is Bookstack. It, it, should, it should be here with the Bookstack database. Um, and it's, it's not here anywhere. However, if we go over here to our, to our uh, URL bar and type in 6875 and click go, there it is. It's still on our system but it's not on our dashboard. And that's because anything installed in Docker outside of Casa OS uh, doesn't show up in Casa OS because Casa OS maintains a database of what's here to show what's installed via Casa OS. It's a little convoluted, but uh, if we take a look over here, um, over here on uh, golangissues.com, uh, somebody uh, set up an issue January 29th saying, hey, I'm having an issue. Uh, there's also one over here. It looks like the same person actually um, on, on uh, probably January 29th as well. Um, so uh, th in fact, this is maybe a little bit older, um, saying, hey, I'm using Watchtower to update my containers because there isn't an updated system in Casa OS. Um, after updating the container, uh, the container works, but it doesn't show in the Casa OS USI or UI. Link uh, said Casa OS itself has a database to record the application that was installed through Casa OS. If the application name updated by Watchtower has a corresponding record in the Casa OS database, it can be shown. Um, so the application you name is updated by UUID question mark. Okay, so then um, a few days later, um, AJ Nart um, responded, then how are we supposed to update the images? Technically the images do update, they just don't update and then show up in Casa OS. So I'm really hoping that the, the, the folks behind Casa OS uh, can, can get that fixed. In the meantime, here's what we're gonna do. The first thing that we wanna do um, anytime we, we are dealing with updates is running backup. Now, what we're gonna do is backup the application, not the the, the, the application data, just the application itself in this instance. What we wanna do here is actually come over to our application. We're gonna use Nginx Proxy Manager as an example. So I'm just gonna click this just so we can see. Um, here it is up and running, everything works. We've got a couple of proxy hosts. I've got my, my administrative credentials have changed. If you watch the video on how to install Nginx Proxy Manager, you'll know that when you first log in, you're required to uh, change your username and password and all that sort of stuff. So here we can see I've got an instance working. So what I'm gonna do is close Nginx Proxy Manager, and I'm going to come over here to the three dots in the top right corner of there, and I'm going to click on Settings. 
and then we'll, we'll take a look at this, just kind of get a, a quick uh, memory of what's going on on this page, because we're going to want to look at this later. You could take a screenshot of this if you wanted to, uh, however you want to remember this, but I've, done, I've dealt with Nginx Proxy Manager enough, I know what this is supposed to look like. So what I want to do is come up to the top right-hand corner, where it says Export App File, uh, and right down here at the bottom left corner, we can see that we've got an npm.json file that was just uh, downloaded from the system. So what we're going to do next is close this pop-up window. And this is where things are going to get a little sketchy um, until you see what's going on here. What we're going to do is actually click uninstall. We're going to click those same three buttons and click uninstall. And then we'll click uninstall. And then here in just a moment, uh, that application will be uninstalled from Docker uh, as well as from our dashboard. Now, the thing to keep in mind with this is we're not actually deleting any data off of the, the, the Docker servers. So uh, with where we've mapped our, our volumes for, for, the, for the, the, the config data as well as the Let's Encrypt data, that's actually still on the server. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are on, uh, we're logged into our Casa OS server. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I like to store things at home, slash Docker, slash whatever the application name is uh, on systems like this. So I'm going to do a CD space slash home slash Docker slash NPM like so, and I'll do an LS. Here we can see we've got two folders in here still. Um, so I've got data and let's encrypt. So let's do a CD into data. And then we'll do another uh, LS to list what's going on. Then we're going to go into logs. So we'll do a CD into logs like so, and we'll do one more LS. And here we can see that we've got a total of eight files in here. So just because we uninstalled the application from Casa OS does not mean that we've actually uninstalled any of the data from the server. All of that is still there. And that's what we're going to use for our update. So what's gonna happen next is that we're going to um, come over here to the right-hand side where it says App Store, and then we're going to do a custom install, and then we're going to click up here where it says Import, and then here we're going to click on App File. And then we can just come over here to the bottom left corner of our screen or wherever your file is happy to get downloaded. I'm just going to drop that in there, and then I'll click Submit. Now we're gonna be presented with the screen that says, hey, verify this before you click go. That's always a good idea. Verify that the data looks the same now as it did when we exported the file. So we'll click okay. Uh, then we're gonna come over here and look. All of this looks exactly like it did before. So I'm comfortable coming down here to the bottom of the screen and clicking install. Now what's gonna happen is it's going to pull, in this case, the latest version because we gave it the latest tag when we did our initial install. Uh, so it's gonna go ahead and pull the latest version of this Docker image and it will then you know, download it, extract it, configure it, and then start the container. So once that's done, uh, we'll take another look at this container once it's been restored. A few moments later. Okay, so everything has updated now and we're back on our dashboard. So if I click this NPM, uh, hopefully it'll let us log in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So because I was able to log in with my uh, pre-existing username and password, that told me initially that things were looking good. Now, if I come back over here to our uh, proxy hosts, those are still in there as well. So I know that uh, updating to the newest version of the container worked without issue. So now that we know how to update containers, uh, we're still going to use Watchtower to get notifications when containers have updates available to them. So let's take a look at that now. So in order to get Watchtower up and running, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to come over here to the App Store. Then we're going to do a custom install. And then we're just gonna kind of fill in the blanks here. So the actual install process of this isn't terribly complicated. However, it is tedious because there are 12 envir environmental variables that you'll need to enter here. Now, if you want to skip over that, you can head over to Patreon and download uh, an exported JSON file that you can use to import into your system and then have a lot less work to do. Totally optional, up to you. Just thought I'd throw it out there. So for our Docker image, we're going to do uh, container. Oops, container, oops. RRR slash uh, watch tower. Our app name will be watch tower. And then we can leave the icon URL as it is. I actually know that this one does put up the right icon. So we're gonna leave that as it is. The web UI, there is no web UI to watch tower. So we're going to, going to skip that. We're also going to skip ports for volumes. We're actually gonna add two volumes. 
Uh, one is for the Docker socket and one is for uh, for the local time. So basically the this first line for the uh, var run docker.sock, basically what that does is it allows the system, allows this container to look at whatever's installed on Docker and then uh, take a look at those individual Docker containers to find out if there are updates. That's basically all that does. The next one, uh, as I mentioned, is for uh, setting what the local time is going to be on this system. Uh, you don't have to do this, however, um, if you don't do this, the cron jobs that we're going to schedule later uh, will actually run at UTC time, uh, which is probably fine unless you want to have a very specific uh, time that things run. So uh, just know that the local time is optional. Just throwing that out there. Uh, so now we've got the environmental variables. And like I said, there are like 12 of them. And <clears throat> so I'm just going to, I'm just going to click this a bunch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our first uh, are, in fact, you know what, I'm just gonna fill these in and then we're gonna come back and talk about each one uh, just so that it'll be a little bit faster. Okay, so here we are. We've got all of our environmental variables configured here. Uh, starting at the top, we've got time zone. I'm uh, close to Denver, so that's what I'm using. Uh, watchtower monitor only true. If you set this to false, uh, it will automatically update your containers when uh, there are updates available. So we only wanna use this to monitor for the time being. Um, so that's what we've got that set to. Uh, the watchtower schedule uses a, a, a six, uh, a six element uh, setup here versus a five. I'll put links to, the, to, to how they use that in the description down below so you can understand that. But basically what we're doing here is at four o'clock, that's where 16 comes in. So 4 p.m., uh, think, think 24 hour time here, uh, 4 p.m. on Thursday is when this system will run checks for updates for the containers on Casa OS. Uh, below that cleanup, mm -mm, we don't necessarily need that because we're not actually doing updates this way, um, but it was there, I left it, whatever. Uh, watchtower notifications will be email in this case. Um, the, the notification email from in this case will be, so I've got, uh, I've got a Gmail address set up specifically for notifications for my Docker systems. Uh, so that's the email that I would put there. Um, the, the next line, the notification email to, who do you want to receive this email? Uh, so you'll put your email there. Again, I'm using Gmail, so my email server is smtp.gmail.com. Uh, uh, the, 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 the password uh, is the next line there. That's the email password for the email address that's sending the email. Um, and then below that, we've got email subject tag. Uh, of course, you'll want to maybe configure this however you've got yours set up. But basically, uh, this is just saying, hey, Cos OS uh, has some updates to some containers. Um, and then the username to log into the email address uh, that's going to be sending the email. So again, that from email at gmail.com. And then the server port, if you're using SMTP with TLS, that's port 587 with Gmail. So once you've got all of this configured, uh, you can just scroll down and click install. And then once that's done, uh, a couple of things will happen. Basically, it will set a cron job to check every Thursday at 4 p.m. To, uh, to look for updates to the containers installed on your system. Also, uh, it, you will get an email saying, hey, we're up and running. Uh, here's when the next uh, update check will run. Let's take a look at that here in just a moment. So here we are, just a couple of, of, of seconds, really. This happened really, really fast. Uh, so basically, Watchtower is now up and running on our system. So the next thing we want to do is actually jump over to my Gmail address and take a look at the email that I received. Okay, so this is the email that I just received. Uh, it looks like it, uh, it didn't actually take my... Uh, uh, my, my, my subject line, that's fine. Um, however, we can see that it's got Watchtower 1.4 using notifications SMTP, uh, checking all containers except explicitly, explicitly disabled with labels. You can, uh, if you want to, you can add labels to certain containers to disable or to, to prevent Watchtower from doing anything with them. Uh, again, I will have a link to how to do that in the description down below. Uh, and of course we can see that our first run uh, scheduling first run for uh, 22 to 24 at four o'clock. Uh, so basically uh, in six days, so that's next Thursday. Um, so the next check will be form performed in 144 hours and 38 minutes and 20 seconds. So uh, again, this will uh, just send us an email letting us know that there are updates available on our system. Uh, with the settings we've got, it should not actually update any of those containers. So while this isn't a, a perfect solution, this is kind of where we're at for the time being until Casa OS or the folks behind Casa OS actually get an update system in place for their system. Uh, so in this video, we've taken a look at uh, first how to run a backup of our application and then reinstall the, the Docker container using that backup to pull the newest version as long as the latest tag is in place on your original install. Uh, from there, we took a look at how to install and configure uh, Watchtower for our setup and not having it update automatically. We're just sending us an email uh, letting us know that there are uh, 
uh, updates available for our containers. And then of course, now we've got the proof that everything is up and running. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It really does actually help. Believe it or not, it really does help. Um, also, um, if you want, like I said earlier, if you want access to um, the, 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 the project files for this, so you don't have to do all of the manual typing for all of those different uh, environmental variable fields, head over to Patreon. Uh, you can grab that over there. But I think with all of that said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.